Okay, I'm again visiting my friend James, and uh, in the last uh, talk that I did with you, we were finishing up talking about the how the Unix philosophy of do one thing, do it well, and uh, I commented on how I've mentioned people always say, oh, programming is so hard, uh, which being creative with programming, I would say, is the most difficult part. Um, but most of the time, I'll give you an example. I was talking to someone on my IRC channel once, and I was giving the argument of programming's not that hard. Any program you write should only take a couple of minutes. <laughs> you know? no, but that, I don't think I said that, but yeah, basically sure. that. And he's like, well, I want to create a to-do list. I'm like, that's simple enough. He goes, I want to sort it into categories. That's simple to do, too. He goes, I want to have different users do this. You know, I'm, not, I'm just like, right. His problem is he's looking at the, I want to create this big project. Right, right. And my point to him was, what you want to do is not hard. It's going to take a while because you want to do a lot of things. Right. But each of those things is actually pretty easy. It's Especially if you think ahead of what you want to do and you see you program with that ahead of sure. time. Sure. Um, and uh, I definitely, when I write programs, for the most part, it's like, it does this. I, it's like, uh, on, on my phone, like, I'll write shell scripts so I don't have to type out long commands. It's like, I run this command and it figures out everything I want to do based on system information. Um, there are some times, though, where I think that, obviously, a, um, what do you call it, um, like, Microsoft Office, a suite, where there's like a suite of software, something like that, like like you're editing a video. Yeah, it's great that we have a command that can cut the video or this or that, but you have to have a suite or like Photoshop or GIMP. It's like, yeah, I can have one command that converts the video to black and white, but it's nice to have that suite with all the different functions. And, um, and a lot of that can be done with plugins, which is kind of like writing individual things, but at the same time, you still have the full source code. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, not really sure where It'd be really hard to edit a photo <laughs> if you were just piping around an image from one you know, right. thing to another. Now, it would be great if you want to do the same thing to every photo, so you can be like, black and white, yeah, adjust yeah. contrast, this, that. But when you're sitting there and you're trying to tweak it, yes. Yeah. So, so there are cases where you do want a bigger project, but for the most part, I personally think that almost all software should start from the command line, and then a GUI interface should come later on. Even with video editing, that's the case with like Caden Live, which uses MLT as the back. Well, yeah, MLT is the background, and there's Melt M E L T, which kind of makes using Melt into a scripting language sort. Now, I've done tutorials on that, but really. Everything, almost everything that can be done in Caden Live, which is a full video editing software, can be done in a script using MLT. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm doing a lot of talking, and it's for me to talk to you. Fine, yeah. And uh, I love it. So uh, comments on what I've talked about so far? I feel like I should ask you a um, question at this point. No, no, no. Yeah, I Any mean, I definitely think. Well, well, okay. Well, well I can. I, yeah. You want me to ask a question? <laughs> no. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Go on. Yeah. You well, say. I was going to say. I think. I think that is. Uh, that's a sign of, you know. Yeah. Obviously, you could take that idea to an extreme where like everything does something, one thing well, and mm -hmm. that's it. But I mean, if you take that to far enough extreme, well, then sort shouldn't even be able to reverse order. You should have like a reverse sort, and that's well, ridiculous. Well, you're reversing, and it's yeah. still sorting. So, so, so. Um, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. But what I think, what I think, really is a testament to is, is when you have, when you have command line abilities to run a, to run a function, to run a, um, a software, mm -hmm. and it has GUI interface. Um, I think it says something about that the, the way that they wrote that. Mm -hmm was that they wrote components that could do one thing really well. Right. They didn't just focus on, well, there's a GUI and there's a button and that button's going to do something. They literally thought, well, we need the ability to make something black and white. Mm -hmm. Now we just attach to the GUI the ability to run that. Right. And a very simple example of that, uh, I'm sure you've probably used Nmap. Yeah. And then there's Zenmap. Have yeah. you ever used Nmap? Uh, I it's just a GUI video. interface for Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a yes. very, very basic one. Yes, right. Uh, basically, you, you choose some drop down, some yeah. checkbox, and it puts the command right there and then yeah. runs it and gives you uh, GUI output. And I think it does some sort of visualization of how yeah. many jumps it did. Yeah. Other than that, you know, it's, it's very, very basic. Some, some uh, backgrounds, like, like I was saying, MLT, Caden Live is, Caden Live is pretty much a program itself right. that right. uses MLT as a back end. Um, and I'm not saying everything needs a GUI interface. And you might disagree. And, and honestly, no, no. you don't need to disagree with me because I feel like, uh, it's it's a testament when when you're when something you're writing is running on terminal as well, but everything doesn't need a a, a a terminal interface. But I think when you're writing the software, 
you'll know when you're writing it well mm -hmm. because when 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 your requirements change or when when you, what you thought it needed to do changes or you need to optimize it mm -hmm. and you need to change something how long does it take you to change it right and so i think when you find when you when you write the functions correctly when you make the right abstractions when you when you modularize your your programming correctly it's very easy to make a change and it not cascade across your whole project yeah so that's that's kind of going back to the, like do one thing well is you want everything you write in your project to do one thing well even if your whole project ends up doing a lot of things at the same time sometimes I go the reverse way where I think too much ahead of I might want to do this I might want to do that Definitely. and I take forever Definitely. to write it to just in case you're going to do something that I will never do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel the exact same way. Um, so there's a balance there, and I, and I usually feel less is more, because I usually find as I go, I quickly find where I should have uh, pulled something out. And it's actually really quickly, if you identify it early and you start pulling, it's actually pretty easy. And then there there's like a lot of, I think, a lot of rules that are that are guidelines. They're not rules. They're guidelines that say things like, you shouldn't write a function that's bigger than a page. Mm -hmm. Like you, you should be able to see the entire function on your screen. Right. Or or each line shouldn't go off the side of your screen. You know because that really says something. Like if you really have a block of code that that's that's that big, it it might be saying that part of that function could should be, be modularized and, and could kind of be pulled out. Right. It should so, be another function that's called by that yeah. function if it needs to yeah. because it's obviously doing something other yeah. than that one function. Right. And and again, like obviously everyone's going to comment to you that like, oh, well, that that's a horrible idea because of this and that. And there's always exceptions to rules. And, and I hey, would hope if my it's viewers... working, fine. <laughs> I don't care. If it works for you, great. But it, And I would hope you know, my viewers realize that we're talking generally. Yeah, sure. And a lot of times when you're talking about software, we're talking general ideas. Obviously, there are going to be some exceptions to right. almost everything that right. we say. <laughs> right. And, and, and But what you find is that in every paradigm, every programming language has kind of the way to abstract those ideas. Uh, the most classic one, I think, is an object-oriented programming language, where you're creating an idea of an object, and that object encapsulates you know, uh, the functionality for that object and the data for that object. And, and that just becomes a way that even if you're, you know, even if you're not an experienced programmer, when you start thinking in terms of that encapsulation, you're almost kind of forced to modularize things very well, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so if if you were going to write a program that in, involved uh, playing cards, and and maybe you write an object that is a card object, or maybe you write an object that's a that's a hand, mm -hmm. a poker hand, you know, right. or you write a, a card object, and the poker hand object can interact with that card object and say something about what your hand is. And then later on, if you decide, well, I don't want to play poker, I want to play back blackjack. Well, if you wrote that card interface well exactly. enough, it, it's it's easily changed from one to the other. Yeah, because you have your deck with each right. of the cards, and you can right. use that without. Um, yeah, the uh, going back to the not getting too complicated. I find a lot of my viewers, and I did this in the beginning too. You want to make a fancy looking GUI, and it does yeah. all this stuff. And I just find a lot of people try to jump ahead and try to. Not necessarily advanced things, but they don't have the basics down yet. But I also learn, understand at the same time, if you sit there trying to learn the basics, you might get bored and never continue, you know? Yeah. It's like, and everyone learns differently. Um, but like, uh, you and I were talking once, it's just like, almost everything you want to do, someone's already done. Yeah. Uh, and your new idea is basically putting those different things together. So if you want to, and well, I have people ask me, I think a few times, a, while, a long time ago I did, Python and GTK user interfaces, GUI interfaces. Yeah. And I showed people how to use a text input, type in that text input, click a button, and it takes that text and puts it in a label. Yeah. People ask me, how do I write to a file? And I would give them a link to my Python, how to write to files. Yeah. And it would confuse them. Because yeah. they're like, well, how do I get from the GUI to that? It's like, it's the same exact process. Yeah, sure. Instead of taking this variable, you take the variable that I showed you how to grab here, Yeah. And put it into the file. Yeah. So it's like people, the hardest part I think for a lot of people with programming, it's not doing these individual tasks, it's being the, um, the creative and how to put those things together. And it's one of those things is, it's just going to click one day. I tell you, my first 10 years of programming, which was in Windows, uh, using mostly batch files, not bash files, but batch files, and Visual Basic, which most of my Visual Basic was making a GUI interface that called batch commands. <laughs> um, 
first 10 years, I could do all these different things. I could do network connections to where I can send a signal to a computer that makes a CD-ROM drive pop out and then play some music. I did not understand any sure. of it. Right. And really it wasn't until I got to Linux and I started, um, since there's more people working at like with, I found at the time at least, I'd go, I'd type in how to do this and there's the code for Visual Basic. Did I understand it? No. Yeah. I didn't even do what, uh, I, I did what a lot of people I still see do, yeah. where I would take a text input in my yeah. GUI right. and use that as the variable instead of creating variables because I didn't know how to use variables right. yeah. properly. Yeah. I'm going to end on that note sure. about how bad of a programmer I was <laughs> and how I probably still am not the well, best programmer. And there's, there's a difference between knowing how to call a function and knowing how to write a program. Right. Right? Like the, I think that's a, another big takeaway. And, and, and not to say, like, the first step to learning how to write programs is just figuring out the primitives, figuring out how to call the functions. So I don't mean to discourage anyone and be like, well, you're not a programmer, but it's just that they're, they're, that you know, you, you, when you use them long enough, you start to get a better process of using them. So anyway, so I'm sorry. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And thank you, James, for joining us. And I hope that you all have a great day with the great bass music in the background. <laughs> We're going to get flagged for copyrights with the music in the background <laughs> on this video. Have a great day. Caching stuff. Right? Sure. Like, well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. And what you were thinking I would have to write. Yeah, yeah. And your argument was, well, this is written in C. And my argument was, well, everything's written in C. Any, any scripting language on uh, Python. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. <laughs> you didn't flip the screen, though. Yes, that's going to bother me. Boop.